Praise the Lord. We're grateful that God has allowed us to be in his house today to worship him and to hear his word. I want to welcome everyone who has joined us through uh, Facebook, YouTube, or whichever uh, platform that you are using to connect with us. Thank you for taking your time uh, to worship with us. Uh, you know, uh, this uh, coronavirus uh, pandemic has actually given us an opportunity to examine our relationship with God. Because if your relationship with God is not a priority, then you won't even care about connecting to church on Sunday. But if you are serious about your relationship with God, then you are always ready, making sure that if you don't come to church, that you will indeed participate on a live Sunday service through any social media platform. So it's really been a test. And you know for yourself how this has challenged you uh, to see where you stand. We are grateful for uh, this day. We do not take it for granted that God has allowed us to be in his house. We are continuing in our series, Basics of the Christian Living. In one word, growing in Christ. We say that growing in Christ is a progressive spiritual development. This spiritual development involves a progressive replacement of the old ideas, which are mainly evil, with the new ideas of Christ. It is replacing the old ideas with the new ideas of Christ. We say that the ultimate goal of growing in Christ is Christ's likeness. This growing in Christ is transformation. We are going through a process of transformation through the renewing of our mind. The goal of this growth, the goal of transformation is to be like Christ. Or to state it differently, to think like Christ. Now this is a process. There is no shortcut to it. You cannot cut any shortcut to be able to arrive to this goal. You must go through the process. But what is interesting is that you can dictate this process. You either can delay it, you can stop it, or you can speed it up. You determine how fast you can attain the goal of spiritual growth. Because it depends on you. In order for this to happen, we must practice the basics of the Christian living. In order for us to be able to achieve this goal, to be more like Christ, to think like Christ, we must practice the basics of the Christian living. It is not how much you know. The question is whether you are practicing. The question is whether these basics of the Christian living are part of your life or have become a habit in your life. That is why we talk about scripture reading. That is why we talk about hearing God's word. That's why we talk about studying God's word. And last week, 
Mr. Jeff Waters demonstrated to us that we can memorize God's word. It was a demonstration, but it was also to show you that none of us here have an excuse of saying, I cannot memorize God's word. Jeff Waters at his age has memorized the whole book of James and you all were witnesses when he recited the whole book of James from memory. That is powerful and that is inspiring. There are five ways that we can feed ourselves with God's word, which is the first basic principle of the Christian living. Feeding yourself with God's word or the intake of God's word. There are five ways that you can be able to feed yourself with God's word. The first one was hearing God's word. The second one was reading God's word. The third one is studying God's word. And last week was memorizing God's word. And next week is meditating God's word. Now I'm excited about next week because this is something that we're not familiar with. The Western culture and our culture, we are not familiar with meditating God's word. The Asian culture, even non-believers, they practice meditation. So next week we will be seeing meditation of God's word. How do we meditate on God's word? But today I would like to do a follow-up of what Mr. Chef Waters did last week. Now that you know that it is possible to memorize scripture. Now that you are inspired to memorize scripture because you've seen someone who quoted the whole book of James from memory. Now that you know that, the question I want to answer today is, what's the importance of memorizing scripture and how do we memorize scripture? But to begin with, let me answer the question, why should we memorize scripture? And the first answer is that Christ Memorize scripture. Jesus Christ quoted from 24 books of the Old Testament. And he quoted scripture from in different occasions while he was teaching. Sometimes he used the scripture from memory to answer the questions that his disciples or the Pharisees or the public asked him. In fact, as we will see here, when Satan tempted him, he used the scripture from memory to rebuke Satan. So if Jesus Christ memorized scripture, if he needed to memorize scripture, how much so do we need to memorize scripture? More so. Godly men and women of the Bible also memorize scripture. In Psalms 119, verse 9 and 11, the psalmist asked the question, how should a young man live his life? How can a young man live a pure life? Then he answered his own question in verse 11. He says, I have hidden, I have hidden your word in my heart that I may not sin against you. Say, so I have hidden your word in my heart that I may not sin against you. What the psalmist was saying is, I have memorized, I have committed your word into memory so that I may not sin against you. But that, that reason why we should memorize scripture is because we are commanded. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 6 verse 4 it reads, 
Hear all Israel. The Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your, your God with all your heart. And with all your soul and with all your strength. Verse 6. These commandments that I give you today are to be on your hearts. Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road. When you lie down and when you get up, tie them as symbols on your hands, bind them on your foreheads as symbols on your hands. That sounds like tattoos. Tie them as symbols on your hands and bind them on your foreheads. Then I like verse 9. says, write them on the door frames of your houses. And verse 9, please, let's go back to verse 9. Write them on the door frames of your houses and on your gates. What's the purpose of talking over and over when you wake up and when you are going to bed? What's the purpose of putting them on your foreheads, tying them on your hands as symbols? What's the purpose of writing them on the doorposts and on the gate? So that the more you see it, you'll be able to memorize it. That you'll be able to say it without seeing it. And as we will see today, that is one way of memorizing. Making sure you get to see it all the time. And the more you see it, the more you talk about it, the more it sticks in your mind. That you won't even need to see it to be able to say it. So this was a command to be able to memorize scripture. Another verse, Colossians chapter 3 verse 16, it reads, Let the message of Christ dwell among you richly, as you teach and admonish one another with wisdom through psalms, hymns, and songs of the Spirit, singing to God with gratitude in your hearts. How do you let God's word dwell richly in you? Memorize it. So that it is in your mind. Memorize it. And then lastly, Joshua chapter, chapter 1 verse 8. Keep this book of the law always on your lips. Meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. How do you give, keep God's word in your mouth? By right? memorizing it. All the time. You keep it in your mouth. The only way it can be in your mouth is if you have it in memory. So that is how you can be able to keep it in your lips and in your mouth. So that is the reason why we should memorize scripture. Christ memorized it. Godly men and women of the Bible memorize it. And we are indeed commanded to memorize it. But what are the benefits of memorizing scripture? There are many benefits. I cannot be able to give you all of them. I'd like to give you 11. But there are many. There are many benefits of reading, of memorizing God's word. The first one, it is the most effective method for planting the ideas of God in your mind. It is the most effective method of planting God's ideas or God's thoughts in your mind. Because you are memorizing, you are putting it in your mind. Pastor Dennis, in 
one of our what's, uh, one of the posts this week on WhatsApp, encouraging us to read scripture. This is one of the quotation he he put. He says, "Fill your mind with God's word, and you will have no room for Satan's lies." See what you, we do not realize is that Satan has already planted his own ideas in our minds. And he's aggressively continuing to plan more of his ideas in our minds. Unfortunately, and it's a scary thought, is that some of Satan's ideas, we have already believed them, and we have even personalized them, without knowing the origin of these ideas. See, Satan gave Eve an idea, and she believed that God had not given them the best. She also believed a lie from Satan that if they were to eat the fruit from the forbidden tree, that they would be like God, knowing good and evil. Now what Eve did not know was that these ideas originated from Satan. And the reason why she did not know is because it was the snake who was talking to her. But the truth is, it was Satan who was speaking to Eve through the snake, passing his ideas to Eve. And Eve believed these ideas. Scary, isn't it? You may actually have beliefs that are from Satan. You may actually have some demonic beliefs that were planted in your mind by Satan, and the reason you did not know it was from Satan is because Satan did not come and stand and told you that. But he used other people or other means of planting his ideas in your mind. That is a scary thought. Just like Eve, she never knew that she was carrying out the ideas from Satan. This is why you and I need to have an honest conversation with ourselves. And let me say that again. You need an honest conversation with yourself. Because you need to begin to question the beliefs that you have. You need to ask yourself, why do I believe what I believe? Why do I do what I do? Why do I say what I say all the time? Who said this in the first place? And where did I get it? And who planted this idea in my mind? You need to begin to question these beliefs because you may actually be carrying on the ideas of Satan, which makes you a demonic agent. Because anyone who is carrying on the ideas of Satan are demonic agents. Because you are, you are planning, continuing to spread on the ideas of the enemy. You also need to ask yourself, why do I defend the way I do stuff? Why do I defend? The other people say, don't say that to me. That is one thing I don't want to hear anyone tell me. If you say that, if I, you will see who I am. I never, never say that to me. Why, why do you say that? Where did you get that idea? Why is it something that if someone says, 
You get upset. These are probably def- uh, defensive mechanisms you've developed so that you cannot be corrected on the wrong things that you are doing. This is why Paul said, we demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God and we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. Just because you are thinking about it does not mean you should believe. All of us have all kinds of ideas crossing our minds. But it doesn't mean that every idea is a holy idea. This is why scripture memory is an effective method of checking out this idea so that you don't just believe any idea that crosses your mind. You have God's word in your mind to evaluate and to test it. Memorizing scripture is a very effective method of destroying evil ideas. So the first benefit is it is the most effective way to plan God's ideas in our mind. Secondly, it keeps you from sinning. You probably have heard the phrase, the Bible will keep you away from sin, or sin will keep you away from the Bible. And our key verse, Psalms 119, verse 9 and 11. How can a young man keep his way pure? And the psalmist answers in verse 11, I have hidden your word in my heart that I may not sin against you. So, memorizing scripture will keep you away from sin. Third, it increases your knowledge of God. It will increase your knowledge of God. Second Peter chapter 3, verse 18 says, But grow in the knowledge and grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. How will you grow in the knowledge and the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ? by getting more of the ideas of Christ. By getting to know him more and more. That is when you will grow in his knowledge. And memorizing scripture is the most effective way of planting the ideas of God in your mind. Number four, you will have ready answers for anyone who ask you about your faith in Christ. You will have ready answers for anyone who asks you about your faith in Christ. First Peter chapter 3, verse 15 reads, But in your hearts, revere Christ as Lord. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reasons for the hope that you have. Always be prepared. Guess what? One of the most effective ways of being prepared is memorizing scripture. Because you are able to give them an answer just like that. Somebody asks you, why is it Christ alone that we have to believe for our salvation? You go, Acts chapter 4, verse 12. For there is no other name that has been given that we should be saved. Only him. No other name. Only Jesus Christ. It is the most effective way 
to be able to answer anyone who asks you about your hope or your faith. Number five. It enables you to progressively think more like Christ. It enables you to progressively think more like Christ. The more you keep God's word in your mind, that means the more you are thinking about it, the more you begin to think like Christ. It is that important. Number six, it enables you to overcome temptation. Matthew chapter four, verse one through 11. This is the example of Jesus Christ. Christ used scripture to overcome temptation. Then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. After fasting for 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. Verse 3, the tempter came to him and said, If you are the Son of God, tell these stones to become bread. Jesus answered, it is written, man does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. He used scripture to correct and to rebuke Satan. Verse 5, then the devil took him to the holy city and had him stand on the highest point of the temple. If you are the son of God, he said, throw yourself down, for it is written. Now, Christ used scripture to correct Satan. Satan turned around and quoted scripture to Christ. He says, if you are the son of God, he said, Throw yourself down, for it is written, He will command His angels concerning you, and they will lift up, they will lift you up in their hands, so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. Satan knows scripture, and he will quote scripture to you. But he always misquotes it and misapplies it and misinterprets it. You better know scripture so that you can correct the enemy. Jesus answered him. It is also written. He quoted scripture by saying it is written. Christ answered him by saying it is also written. Do not put the Lord your God to the test. Yeah, you are right. But what you are doing is that you are putting the Lord your God to the test. And the, it is also written, do not do that. Verse 8. Again the devil took him to the very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their splendor. Verse 9, all this I will give you, he said, if you will bow down and worship me. Jesus said to him, away from me, Satan, for it is written, worship the Lord your God and serve him only. Christ used scripture to overcome temptation, to rebuke the enemy. If you memorize scripture, it will enable you to overcome temptation. You will be able to use scripture to overcome temptation. Number eight, 
you will be equipped to comfort and counsel other believers. You will be equipped and comfort and counsel other believers. Psalms, actually Proverbs chapter 25, verse 11. Proverbs 25, verse 11. It reads, like apples of gold in setting of silver is a ruling rightly given. Not sure what that translation is, but uh, let me read it here. A word aptly spoken is like apples of gold in settling of silver. A word aptly spoken. Guess what? The more you memorize scripture, the more you fill yourself with God's word. Guess what happened? You will be able to minister to people with words of wisdom from, from scripture. When people are in need, when they call you for counseling, when they call you, when they have challenges in their life, guess what? When you have filled yourself with God's word, guess what? You will be speaking words of wisdom to them. And it will be a timely word. A timely word. When people ask you questions, sometimes you don't even have your Bible with you, but because you have it in your mind, you will give them the answer right there. Number nine. Actually, number ten. It will give you confidence in witnessing. Now, part of the reason why Many believers are scared of witnessing. It's because they do not know what to say. But if you memorize scripture, Romans chapter 3, verse 23, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Romans chapter 6, verse 23, the wages of sin is death, and the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus. You have the bad news, you have the consequence of, the, of sin, for all I've seen, that is all. 6.23, the wages of sin is death. Then you go to Hebrews chapter 9, verse 27. For it is appointed for man to die once, and then face judgment. You have the bad news there. All I've seen, everyone, and all means all. And the wages of this sin is death. Hebrews chapter 9 verse 20, uh, 27 says, For it is appointed for man to die once, and then comes judgment. In other words, we are dying because of sin. But we only die once. But then you will be raised, and you face judgment. But then Romans 8 verse 1 says, for there is, But there is now no condemnation. For those who are in Christ. There is therefore no condemnation for those who are in Christ. Mm -mm. Hebrews chapter 9 verse 27 says, It is appointed for a man to die once, and then comes judgment. But you are saying in Romans 8 verse 1, There is therefore no condemnation for those who are in Christ. So, you begin there. Do you want to escape judgment? Then you need Christ. Then you begin to talk to them about Christ. You begin with the bad news. So you need to do, at least you need to know, to know those verses from memory. So it helps you to be effective in witnessing and telling people about Christ. Next, it will help you to make the right decisions. It will help you to make the right decisions. Psalms 119, verse 24. Psalms 119, verse 24.
It reads, Your statues are my delight. They are my counselors. The psalmist says, Your word are my counselors. They help me to make the right decisions. So memorizing scripture will help you to make the right decision. Proverbs 6, 20, 21 through 22. And it reads, Bind them always on your head. Fasten them around your neck. That is God's word. When you walk, they will guide you. When you memorize scripture, they will guide you to make the right decision, to go to the right direction, and to say the right things. Next, I forgot one number I do is, but it's in my numero, Roman numeral numbers. It speeds up the process of transformation. It speeds up the process of what? Transformation. Romans chapter 12 verse 2 says, Do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. How do you renew your mind? By God's word. If you memorize the scripture, it speeds up the process of transformation. It speeds up the process of transformation because you, are, you have it in your mind. You are renewing your mind faster because you have it in your mind. So scripture memory speeds up the process of transformation. And then lastly, it protects you from false doctrine. It protects you from false doctrine. It is amazing what one verse can do for you. You remember the story I shared about an old man when false prophets were in our area sometimes back in 1982 and they were telling people, Christ is going to come 1986, June 15, it's going to be the end of the world. People left their own churches and joined that denomination. But there was one old man in our area. He said, no, 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 no. Say, these guys are false, and people are like, how do you know? And he said, Christ said, concerning that day and the hour, no one knows it except the Father. No one knows the day nor the hour except my father in heaven. That old man knew that first. And he said, these guys are false teachers. What they are teaching you is wrong. And he was right. 1986, June 15, came by and passed by. Christ has not come back. Why? He knew one verse. It's amazing what one verse can do for you. Hebrews chapter 11, uh, Hebrews chapter 13, verse 8, verse 8 says, Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Yesterday, today, forever. Yesterday, today, forever. Jesus is the same. Just knowing that alone. No one can try to mislead you about who Christ is. Because you will say, Christ is the same yesterday, today and forever and that means he never changes that means he can do what he used to do he never changes here are a few quotations on the importance of scripture. Actually only two. Charles Swindoll says, 
I know of no other single practice in the Christian life more rewarding, practically speaking, than memorizing scripture. No other single exercise pays greater spiritual dividends. Why? Your prayer life will be strengthened, your witnessing will be sharper and more effective, your attitude and outlook will begin to change, your mind will become a lord and of, of servant, your confidence and assurance will be enhanced. Your faith will be solidified. Dallas Willard, professor of philosophy at the University of Southern California, wrote, Bible memorization is absolutely fundamental to spiritual formation. If I had to choose between all the disciplines of spiritual life, I would choose Bible memorization. Because it is a fundamental way of filling your mind with what it needs. So in conclusion, now that you know the importance of scripture memory, how do you memorize it? First, select a passage, a verse, a chapter, or a book depending on how you want to start. Having heard Chef Waters, some of you will probably memorize a book because you are inspired. Then read it over and over. Then write it, make flashcards. Write, down, write it down on three by five cards. Or you may want to buy ready-made memory verses that, has already, that have already been printed on flashcards. Then put it where you can see more often. Remember Deuteronomy chapter 6? Write it on your hands as symbols, on your forehead, on your doorpost. You can do the same thing. Make it a wallpaper on your gadgets, on your phone, on your iPad, or on your computer. Hang it in the kitchen, bathroom, bedroom, doors, dashboard of your car. Or you can download an app. There are many apps out there that will help you to memorize scripture. One of them is Scripture Singer. My verses, Fighter verses. Don't forget God's word, hidden within. Or make melody, sing it. There are many songs that we sing that are actually straight from scripture, nothing added to it. Make a melody out of it. And then find someone else who can help you to review. Get somebody whom can help you. I also would like to suggest that you stick to one translation of the Bible. Don't be memorizing one in King James and then tomorrow you are in New American Standard Version, you will be confused. So stick to one translation. Now I know you are asking, how, how can I make sure that I remember what I have memorized? Well, you need to set a time to review at least three times a day. And it doesn't take long. Just set a time to review. When I was going through Bible college, I used all my meal times as a time to review my memory verses. I wasn't talking to people. When I was eating, I had it here and I was reviewing them, reviewing my verses. So all my meal time, I set it as time to memorize scripture. You can do that. It doesn't take long. I can assure you, it doesn't take long. But you must have a consistent time to review in order to be able to remember. Now, go slow. Don't start by memorizing 100 verses. Just go slow. And then after some time, you can pick up the speed and memorize as much as you want. 
and ask God to help you to memorize his word. Ask God to help you to memorize his word. Now, I have some verses here that you can start with and we'll put it on our uh, church WhatsApp. Uh, verses on evangelism. You begin with the bad news, the verses that I quoted. Romans chapter 3, verse 23. Romans 6, 23. Hebrews 9, 27. Romans 8, verse 1. And then you go to the good news. John 3, 16. Romans 5, 8. Romans 10, uh, 9. Then you can talk about assurance of salvation. You need to memorize 1 John chapter 5, verse 11 and 12. And this is the testimony. God has given us life, and this life is in His Son. He who has the Son has life. He who does not have the Son of God does not have life. You have a verse there as assurance of salvation. Another assurance of salvation. John 5, 24. He who believes in me has eternal life. Has crossed from death to life and will not be condemned. It gives you three assurances. Anyone who has given, believes in Christ has eternal life. It is a present tense. Has crossed past tense. Has crossed from death to life. And then future will not face any condemnation. You have assurance of salvation right there. And then assurance of answered prayer. John 16 verse 24. Until now you have not asked anything in my name. Ask and you will receive and your joy will be complete. That verse I memorized back in 1982. Most of those that I just quoted, I memorized them back in 1982. It's already there. So it will stick in your mind. Another one, assurance of victory. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. No temptation assists you except what is common to man. And God is faithful. With that, but without temptation, God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. There you have a verse for temptation. You know that whatever comes into my life, it is not uncommon. Other believers are facing. But God is faithful with this temptation. He will provide a way out for me to overcome it. So there are many verses that you can memorize. And then, of course, there are many popular verses that you know. Jeremiah 29 verse 11 For I know the plans I have for you Plans to prosper you And not to harm you Proverbs chapter 3 verse 5 and, and 6 One of my favorites Trust in the Lord with all your heart In all your ways acknowledge him and Lean not on your own understanding In all your ways acknowledge him And he will do what? He will make your path straight Philippians 4 13 I can do everything through him who gives me strength Jeremiah 33, verse 2, verse 3. Call me, and I will answer you. Isaiah, chapter 26, verse 3. They that waited upon the Lord. You will keep them in peace, they that waited upon you. Why? Because their mind is stayed in you. Matthew, chapter 7, verse 7. We know that one from Sunday school. Ask and you will receive. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be opened to you. And then the most popular one, Romans chapter 8, verse 28. And God works all things together for good for those who do what? Who love Him. These verses are very good, they will help you. They help me to preach. They will help you to evangelize. And as we've seen all those reasons that I've given, I believe it's 12 that I've given the importance or the benefits of scripture memory. So are we ready to start memorizing scripture? Who is ready to start memorizing scripture today? Amen. Amen. Anyone else? Let me see. Amen. Amen. Now we'll put that uh, uh, thing, uh, the list on, uh, on our WhatsApp so that you can, can begin memorizing scripture. Let us get in the process of transformation by putting God's ideas in our mind. 
Next week, we will do meditation of scripture. And you will realize one of the most effective way of meditating scripture is by memorizing God's word. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for this day. Thank you for your word. Thank you for the encouragement, the challenges, and the command that we should memorize scripture. Our Lord Jesus Christ showed us an example by memorizing scripture. And the men and godly men of the Bible memorize scripture. Help us that we will do the same. We thank you and we give you all the glory. In Jesus' name, amen.